Hi everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel. Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Warren Bennett and as you can see, we've got Trev behind me, zooming the normal position next to his tennis ball. So we are in the academy, so you're not seeing things. We're back in the academy. The kind folk at Chesterfield Golf Club have allowed me to do a few videos inside, so much appreciated to them. So as the thumbnail suggests, I can add 10% driving distance to your game. Now 10% might not sound a lot, so for instance, 200 yards, I can add 20 yards to your total driving distance. But you know, you're gonna hit a club less at least, sometimes two. So I'm gonna show you through these tips and exercises, I'm gonna show you how you can add 10% more distance to your driving. Okay, just gonna get the back camera set up and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, everyone, so what I'm gonna tell you is the basis to my teaching. Now that's obviously flexible it's because a tour player probably creates enough speed, they want a little bit more control. They wanna be able to kind of control their spin and control their shape. This is mainly for the person, the golfer, who wants to obviously increase their distance. So they're kind of feeling like they're putting in maximum effort, but they're not getting maximum reward here. Someone who kind of, they kind of plateau in terms of distance. The reason why that is, by the way, is ball speed. If you haven't got the ball speed, everything's just gonna fall out the sky the same kind of distance. So all these little exercises and tips and drills I'm gonna give you here is to increase your club head speed. Now you don't have to do all these because obviously it's not a swing by numbers. Um, some things will talk to you better than others. I'm just gonna talk you through it. Obviously we're gonna kind of do this with a driver because it's only gonna give us the maximum effect in terms of distance, hopefully. So first of all, we're gonna start with styles. Just quickly, just gonna brush over this pretty quickly, but it's really important. So what you want to do, you want to offer your right hand under your left. Take your stance with your left hand only and drop your hand to your knee there and keep your shoulders and offer your right hand to your club. So you can see there from the front view, I've got this tilt already built in. You don't want your right hand over. It's kind of feel like your elbows looking towards that front camera there. And my palm is facing forward. Twist your hand. So you're going to keep your elbow looking forward and you're just gonna twist your hand and then offer it. If you've got your right arm twisted that way, it's gonna be naturally over the top, which is gonna help casting, and then you're gonna lose the speed. So just those two exercises, let's offer that right side under the left. So twist your elbow, get your palm facing towards the, the front here, twist, and then offer. Or you can just kind of bring it down here. Make sure you feel like there's a kink in your body and then under. You want this softness, and this is going to help with this backswing and downswing. Right, okay, so backswing now, and then we're going to get onto the juicy stuff. If you've got a poor backswing, or just one that's going to encourage casting and over the top, it's going to be really hard to change that, by the way. So it's where you're delivering this arrow to the top, so you can just kind of not let go, but it makes it so much easier to then swing down into the ball. Because that bit down to the ball, you can't really feel. So if you get more of a kind of setting yourself up for success at the top of the backswing, you've got more chance. Okay, so posture, a little bit under. Now backswing. You can see, because the ball's off the front foot, my head is naturally behind the ball with the line there. You are just twisting your belly button. And that's, and you're allowing your pockets. So both my left pocket and my right pocket are now twisting. I haven't really moved my head. My head's gonna get knocked along for the ride because my shoulders are kind of joined to my neck, obviously. But you can see there now, I'm twisted fully for a 52-year-old who hasn't got any flexibility anymore. I'm a bit of a dodgy back, but there you go, because I'm now twisting, allowing my left knee, as you can see, to kick in. I haven't just kept it straight, oh, it hurts. I'm allowing everything to twist. I'm not straightening my left, my right leg. I'm allowing a little bit of movement, but I can feel my kind of my weight into my right side there. You can see at the top of my backswing, I've got that kind of that kink between my left thigh and my spine. And you can see I'm now ready to sit behind the ball and whack it. It's going to encourage your right to left spin a little bit more. You may have seen in previous back catalogues videos is done quite a lot of this stuff in terms of telling you about how to coil. So it's a bit more in depth on that one. I'm just kind of glossing it over a little bit. If you're new here, this coil, which I always say, coil meaning your belly button moving. Basically it's your hips, kind of where your pockets are. And then your belly button and belt buckle are moving. Everything's allowed to twist basically. 
So it's not a turn, it's a twist and a coil. So you're keeping yourself in a barrel, you're not moving very much. Now it's all about getting your arms moving quicker than your chest. People who swing without speed, they're trying to put too much effort into it and there's only so much range of motion, there's only so much speed your arms can swing by doing that. Right everyone, so the transition, so just before you get to the top of the backswing to on the way down, so you can, as you can see it's kind of, and as you know if you play golf, there's a lot going on down there and it's really hard to change. I'm going to give you a few little pointers to help with this transition and make it a little bit more kind of user friendly, so you kind of have some confidence that you know this club is dropping in the correct position for you. Um, so you don't really have to work at it too much. You just kind of, you're setting yourself up a little bit to allow this club to drop down without you thinking about it. Because if you can get this transition right, if you can get this club and your arms and everything dropping in the correct position, the club's gonna do the work for you. Okay, so the biggest fault I see with people trying to get this club back to the ball is speed. What they're doing in terms of rushing this top of the backswing position because kind of, if you're starting, why wouldn't you? Because you've got the golf ball out in front of you, why wouldn't you go after it? Now in golf, just for a split second, you want to try and delay that kind of club going out. A lot of golfers have too much out early on. So out meaning this side. What you want to do, you want to try and get this club dropping. You can see there's a bit more down because stating the obvious, this is called the downswing. You want to keep this club behind you for a little bit longer. Now I would say, if you're squeezing the grip as hard as you can, 10 out of 10, you need to be a two. Instinct won't let you go. Two or three, I'd say, no more than that, because you want this club to feel heavy. And the only way these modern clubs can feel heavy, graphite shaft, titanium heads, is to feel like you're hardly holding on. And then you can be able to feel this club then. If you grip it too hard, you're not gonna be able to feel it. Keep it light. When you're under pressure, Keep your grip light to allow your arms to swing in front of your body. This is the basis to my teaching, to allow your arms and club to swing in front of you and release past you. I call it less is more. You're setting yourself up for success. You're, now you're doing less with your body, more with your hands and arms. Keeping your chest back as much as you can, you're delaying, so you're delaying the out. If my shoulders move from the transition, my club and arms after a period of time, not straight away because I've taught myself, but if I hit 100 balls, I'm guarantee well into those 100 balls, my club's going to start coming over the top. Then you're in kind of compensation mode after that. So you want to do the opposite. You want to twist, keep your shoulders there, keep your chest pointing as back as long as you can. You can start moving a little bit more lateral instead of twisting, you see. I want you to do this exercise here. I want you to feel light you're introducing a little bit more lateral shift. So you can see both my pockets are going towards the target. I haven't spun yet. It's exaggerated. I always do it exaggerated to show you for effect. Now we're kind of keeping everything the same and just bumping over, bumping over. Head stays still though. I'm not bumping over with my head. Holding my head, I'm just doing a lateral shift with my bottom half and keeping my body there and allowing my arms to drop down. So I just want you to do this exercise, a little pump drill. But it's not just a pump drill staying still, that's not real life. You need to introduce some lateral kind of pressure shift, I call it, which I showed you in a couple of videos ago. Get your shift of the weight over to your left. And that helps with this delay of the top half. Because if I didn't move my bottom half, something's got to hit the ball. And nine times out of 10, people need to feel like they're gonna hit the ball with their top half because that isn't moving. You get your bottom half moving, that can be delayed slightly. It's called sequence. We need to sequence this golf swing and sequence this club into the back of the ball. Give this club the best chance to drop in the slot and then release. Now I want you to lateral shift with both pockets without twisting. It's exaggerated. And then keep your head still and allow your arms to come down. Nice and light, allow them, just allow them to drop. If you bump, your hands will want to come down. If they don't bump and if they just twist, they're going to want to go this way, you see? So lateral bump. Remember, you over the toppers and casters and one people, golfers who don't create the speed they want, you're probably over the top and casting and losing this energy. You want to try and keep hold of it. 
lateral shift. I call it the lateral pressure shift. Kind of piggybacking on the same thing as the video I did a couple of videos ago, I think. But get in this position, it's way too exaggerated. It's way too late. But by the time you get to about here, the clubs are gonna to wanna to get thrown out. And just pressure shift it off. You can see what my leg is doing there, kicking my right knee in, and I'm kicking off the inside of my right shoe. I haven't twisted yet, don't need to. But I'm pressure shifting over. And now the second half, I'll get on to a minute, but you've got to have that first part. You've got to set yourself up. That transition move down, you've got to set yourself up for this second half. Because the second half of the downswing, you're not gonna feel. So you've got to get yourself in the position to be able just to let go from there. But you can't let go if you're in the wrong position. Because you've thrown it outside, from here you can't release it. Well, you can, but you're gonna hit it over your left shoe. So what, after a period of time, to get that club back to the ball, I'm gonna to have to sit back, I'm gonna to have to cut across it, and then after a period of time, I'm gonna hold on with no release and there's gonna be a chicken wing after a while. So I'm gonna be so limited, just because I started the domino wrong here. Grip it in your fingers if you can. It'll really help with maneuverability. Good twist, and now from here, it's a pressure shift, head still, and down. Pressure shift, head still, and I get the club coming in. Get your elbow into your side. Pressure shift. No twisting here, everyone. You can feel it off the inside of my right shoe there, as you can see it kicking in. Don't worry about the second half. The second half is going to come in a minute. But you're practicing this 10, and how many I've done here? Seven, eight, nine, ten. You, you do that daily. Don't be too impatient because expecting to grab it straight away and you're standing on the first tee and expecting it to work, it might do, and hopefully it will. But stuff that I'm teaching you is to, for you to kind of understand why that ball does what it does, and for you to kind of get some consistency and continuity in your golf. Get the violins out, but I didn't have that during my professional career. Obviously I could hit the ball and I was a good striker of the ball, so I was kind of, but for my standard where I was playing, it wasn't good enough. I had to, have a, I had to rely on a magical short game and good putting all the time, so I felt really uneasy because I didn't understand it. I've worked on the same things for 10 years and I want you to do the same, not kind of, flitter in and out of different swing thoughts. I want you to get better at what you're doing. And then you have a solid foundation because we're all going to hit some bad shots. So when you're on the golf course and it goes a little bit wrong, because it's always going to, you've got the ability to kind of rein it in a little bit. It's going to improve your confidence and get you enjoying golf more. You're not here to be a professional golfer maybe. 99.9% .9 of the time, you just want to go out and have a good time with your friends and play nice golf. And there's no better feeling like Hogan said, is it? When you hit a nice shot, go straight through the club shaft, straight into your soul. And that's really, you know, you're not going to hit many of those, but there's no better feeling, is there, when you're hitting a nice shot, but you've got to understand why. You want to be good, especially off the tee. You want to use that driver and not smother it. This is the position you need to be in. Set yourself up for success. Okay, let's get that release now after all that rabbiting. Okay, so second half of the downswing, like I said, you're not really having to think about too much. But let's give you a couple of pointers to kind of let this club head go. If you can work on that lateral pressure shift, you're in now in a position to let go. There's the foundation to my teachings for 90% of students. You keep your head back behind the ball and then you're allowing your club to swing past your head. That is split second, by the way. That doesn't happen by swing by numbers. Let me show you. I'm gonna draw a line where the ball would be. I'm swinging back, pressure shifting over whilst allowing this to drop down. And then from here, um, the club is now swinging past that yellow line. Lateral pressure shift, nice and soft release. Lateral pressure shift, soft and release. You can see I'm starting to blend this up now. You can stop. Okay, I haven't twisted, great. Let go. You can introduce a full follow through there. You can break it down. Lateral pressure shift, drop in the slot. You can check it. Oh God, look how far behind that is, beautiful. And then you're gonna let go. I want you to do this little exercise. Swing back, drop, pressure shift, release. Swing back, pressure shift, release. Swing back, pressure shift and down, release. Swing back, pressure shift down, release. Good little mantra. It's difficult. You're there juggling all these swing thoughts, especially if you're new to this. Remember, nice and light to start with. 
not putting any tension into your hands onto the grip. So good twist, pressure shift down and release. Shift down, hands are coming in, hands nice and light, clubs still up in the air a little bit, release. Pressure shift down and release, without stopping this time. Pressure shift down and release. It's exaggerated, probably gonna hook it doing this, but that's what I want you to do. Feel exaggeration. Pressure shift down. Why this is exaggerated is from the hind view. I'm so shut, you can drive a London bus through my arms there. And then we're gonna blend that up, everyone. Nice and smooth to start with. Swing back, drop down, release. Don't have to hit balls, remember, just here, blending all these motions. Twist, pressure shift down, release. Head nice and still until it swings through. Swing back, pressure shift down, release. Right, right, let's see what goes on with the golf ball. Now, all I want you to think of is a little bit of lateral shift, so you're gonna feel it in your foot, inside of your foot, and I want you to keep your head behind the ball. I'll be very, very surprised if I don't draw this. A Little bit. Didn't start right enough for my liking, but you can see the right to left spin on the ball. Didn't hit it out in the middle, to be fair. So you get an idea, everyone, how difficult this transition is and how difficult it is to feel, especially in full motion and you shouldn't be able to feel it. That's a difficult thing in golf. But what you can do is set yourself up for success, following these pointers. Take the tension out of your hands, get yourself in a good backswing position. Allow this to drop down by lateral shifting over and then releasing it past you. If you're new here to the channel, thank you very much. I hope this is something that can be of some help to you in any future videos and any past videos. So if you haven't subscribed, I'd love you to come along and subscribe. That'd be a great help to me. And if you have, if you're a regular viewer, thank you very much for your continued support. It's much, much appreciated. So from myself and a very sleepy Trev at the uh, entrance to the academy here, we bid you farewell and we'll see you on the next one. Have a great golfing week, hopefully a drier one than here. We'll see you next time. Cheerio.